Imagine you're at a concert and you park your car in this massive parking lot. Of course, you're afraid you'll forget where you parked, so you drop a pin on your map app. Now, no matter what happens, you always know how to get back to that car. In React, useRef is kind of like that pin drop. It gives you a way to keep track of something, even if the rest of your app keeps re-rendering and changing around it. So what is useRef exactly? It's a React hook that gives you a persistent reference to something. That could be a DOM element on your page, or even just a variable that you don't want to reset every time React re-renders your component. And here's the best part. Unlike state, changing a ref doesn't cause a re-render. That's its superpower. Let's start simple. First, I'll import it by typing import useRef from React. Then, we'll just make a component. Nothing fancy yet. Cool. Now inside this component, we want to create something called a ref. A ref is like a little container that React gives us, so we can hold on to a value between renders. Right now, we don't have anything to store, so we'll start it off as null. So what does that really mean? When we write useRef null, React is basically giving us a box we can store something in. At the start, that box is empty. That's why it says null. Nothing's inside yet. Right now, if we look at input ref current, it's literally just null. What's happening behind the scenes is React gives us a ref object. That object looks kind of like this. So yeah, it's just an object with one property called current. And because we said use ref with the value of null, React sets that starting value to null. But here's the cool part. We can tell React what to put in that box. And the way we do that is by hooking it up to an element in our JSX with the ref attribute. Let's try that with an input field. Inside our return statement, let's first create a simple div that's just going to act as a wrapper for everything we put inside. Now, inside that div, we'll add an input field. But here's the important part. Notice how we give it a ref attribute, and we pass in our input ref. What that does is tell React, hey, whenever you render this input, go ahead and drop a reference to it inside my box. So now, after this component renders, input ref current is no longer null. It's pointing directly to that input element in the DOM. And that means whenever we want, we can directly interact with this input, like focusing it, clearing it, or checking its value. For example, let's add a button that focuses the input when clicked. First, we'll add a function called handle focus. Inside that function, we'll grab our input from the ref and call the focus function on it. Now we've got the function, but we need a way to trigger it. Let's add a button, and when that button is clicked, it'll run our handle focus function. So now when you hit the button, the input instantly gets focus. The cool part? No matter how many times this component re-renders, that ref always points to the same DOM element. Its reference to that focus value will never disappear. And this is why it's much more reliable than just trying to juggle focus with state. That's the real superpower of useRef. It gives you a stable connection to something that doesn't reset on every render. Speaking of a real superpower, imagine having an AI that can test, fix, and validate your React projects while you code. No setup, no writing test files, no painful debugging just to figure out what broke after that tiny refactor. That's exactly what TestSprite does. It's the first fully automated testing agent built right into your IDE, made for developers building with AI. It's like having a silent coding partner who's always watching your app, catching issues early, and even suggesting fixes before you push to production, all without you touching a single line of test code. And here's the best part. Test Sprite integrates directly with your editor through something called MCP, the Model Context Protocol, which basically means it plugs right into your favorite AI-powered IDE like Cursor, Tray, Claude Code, or even VS Code Copilot. You can literally just ask your assistant, hey, test this project with Test Sprite, and it'll go off, analyze your front end and back end, and run end to end tests. Getting it running takes less than two minutes. All you need is Node.js version 22 or higher, a free test sprite account, and an API key from your dashboard. You just sign in, head to settings, click on API keys, create a new one, and copy it. Then, depending on your editor, the setup is super quick. It feels like you've got a built-in QA team that never sleeps. Whether you're learning React, experimenting with Supabase, or shipping your next AI-powered SaaS app, TestSprite keeps your code clean and your flow uninterrupted. And if you want to try it out yourself, TestSprite's got a free starter plan that gives new users one full month of access. It's the perfect way to see how much faster and smoother your workflow can get once testing happens automatically. Check out TestSprite.com, links in the description below. It's free to start, and once you see it working inside your IDE, you'll love it. Now, let's get back into the video. Refs aren't only for DOM nodes, though. They're also great for storing values that you don't want to reset on every render. For example, let's track how many times a component renders, but without causing even more renders. 
What does that mean exactly? Let's say we want to track how many times a component has rendered. If we try to do that with state, it would just cause an infinite loop of re-renders. But with a ref, it just stays quiet in the background and keeps count for us. So let's start with a simple component. Cool. First step, let's set up a reference. I'll call it render count and start it at zero. Think of this like putting a sticky note inside the component. Every time React redraws the component, that sticky note is still there, keeping its value. Now let's make it actually count up. On every render, I'll just add one to that value. So now, whenever the component renders, it quietly bumps up the number. And notice, since this is a ref, React isn't going to re-render just because the number changed. It just updates in the background. Finally, let's show that number on the screen. And there we go. Now, each time the component re-renders, the counter goes up by one. But React doesn't get stuck in an infinite loop because refs don't trigger re-renders the way state does. This is super useful when you're dealing with external libraries. For example, if you plug in a chart library or a map, you can store its instance inside a ref so React doesn't reset it on every render. Or when you're using a video or audio element, a ref lets you play, pause, or seek without triggering re-renders. Another really practical case is remembering the previous value of a prop. That way, you can compare what it was before versus what it is now. Here's the basic component. It receives a value prop. We create a previous value reference. Right now it's empty, but soon it'll store the last value across renders. Next, let's create a use effect. Inside the effect, we assign the latest value to previous value dot current. That means when the component renders again, the ref still has the old value, which is exactly what we need. Now we're displaying both, the current value and the one from the previous render. Super handy for tracking a prop increased or decreased, like a score or a counter, or for animations that depend on the direction of change. Basically, you keep a little memory of the previous value using a ref. So if your score goes up, you can flash green, and if it goes down, flash red. Or if you have a chart or a sliding panel, knowing the old value lets you animate smoothly from there instead of jumping straight to the new number. It's like having a quiet helper that remembers the last state so your UI can react smarter. So to wrap it all up, useRef is like React's sticky note. It's created because React needed a way to let us hold onto values between renders without messing with how the screen looks. Whether it's a DOM element you need to control directly or just a variable you want to keep around quietly, refs give you that stable, reliable pointer you can always go back to. I know we learned a lot today about React's useRef hook, which is why we're giving you a PDF version of this video. It includes everything we covered, plus some extra tips and tricks for using refs in your own projects. Become a Nova Plus member to get access to exclusive cheat sheets and playbooks. We'll be diving into more React content soon, like use callback, use memo, and other hooks you'll definitely want in your toolkit. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. Well, that's it for now, Novas. Thank you for watching. Thank you.